In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a regular vacuum style fuel pump and change it for this electric style fuel pump. It's a very easy upgrade for your lawnmower. This is Rudy from Take a Bath Productions with another video showing you how to fix various things. If you're a subscribed member to my community, then welcome back. If you're new to my channel, consider clicking that subscribe button below and please like this video if it was helpful for you. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, so if you suspect a bad fuel pump, the easiest way that you can tell is to take the fuel line off of the carburetor, like I've got here at the end of the fuel line, and crank the motor over. Engine, whatever. And we have nothing coming out of there. So I suspect the fuel pump is bad, and we're going to go ahead and take the, uh, the factory mechanical fuel pump off of here and replace it with an electrical one. So here's the little fuel pump I'm using. It's a, a small fuel pump. I'll leave a link to it in the description. It's only a two to three and a half PSI, so it's a very low pressure. Uh, we don't want much pressure for a lawnmower carburetor. So the only thing you really have to do to this to, uh, to get it ready is put Teflon tape here on this little filter that it comes with. All right, I'm gonna use some yellow Teflon tape. It's supposed to be uh, gas resistant. And we got our tape wrapped on there. When you're doing Teflon tape, wrap it in the direction of the uh, threads. I usually go in a clockwise direction. And just screw that puppy on there. Careful not to over tighten that. All right, that's pretty tight. Unfortunately, these only come in 5 16 You can't get them in quarter that I noticed. Uh, but the quarter will go on there. You just have to uh, be patient with it and kind of uh, persuade it to go on there, and it, it will go on there. Okay, so unfortunately, there's not a lot of choices on where to mount the fuel pump, but this one seems to be the best one. Here's the inlet on this side, and the, uh, the tank is over here, and of course the outlet is going to have to come around, and I'm going to screw it to the frame and then run it back to the motor. Not great. Um, the choices are, are kind of limited, but um, this is the best one. It's close to the fuel tank. It's also close to the battery and where I'm going to mount the power switch. So uh, I'm just going to drill two small holes in the frame right there and then screw that down with some self-drilling screws. All right, so next you're going to want to hook up your fuel hoses. Uh, this is the one here that's coming from the fuel tank, and I'm sure I'm going to have to adjust the, uh, the length of it, but uh, you're going to want to get the uh, hoses off of the old fuel pump, and the outlet hose over here that's going to the carburetor is going to be too short to make it to the new fuel pump, so I'm going to have to take that one out completely and replace it with a longer hose so that it's all the way uh, one piece. All right, so let me pull this one off here, and this one's got a fuel filter on it, so there's probably some fuel in there that's going to spill. This short hose here is the factory uh, fuel line that came off the filter and went to the old fuel pump, and it slipped right over that 5 16 with no problem at all, and I was even able to use the factory uh, clamp. So all I have to do now is take the, uh, the longer hose that was coming from the fuel tank, and kind of adjust it and cut it with a pair of scissors and slip that back on the uh, fuel filter. All right, that took care of the inlet. Let's do the outlet. I've got the new fuel line installed on the carburetor along with this heat tubing right here, this... Uh, cloth that's kind of uh, protects the fuel line. I've got about four feet of line here, so that's the uh, beginning. I can put the top of the uh, motor back together now, and now I just have to route the uh, fuel line back over to the fuel pump. One other thing I wanted to show, I'm going to leave the old fuel pump on there, even though it's junk, just so I don't lose the uh, parts that go to it. 
uh, you can take a vacuum cap that you can get at an automotive parts store and just slip that over the connections and also the one coming from the engine that supplies the vacuum for that. Um, I just stuck a cap in there and then put a clamp on it like that. So, uh, so that's not just sucking air into the, uh, into the engine like that, okay? So your lawnmower might be a little bit different, but um, in this case, I'm working on a Toro Zero Turn time cutter lawnmower, and I've got the uh, fuel line coming out of the carburetor here. And then I'm using this style of clamp that you can get from your automotive store, or I uh, see the link below, and I'll have some there uh, for you to look at. And I just ran it along the frame right here, kind of keeping it out of the way. Now, when, if you're going to clamp those down with the, these self-drilling screws, make sure to uh, feel underneath there to make sure there's not any wires or cables or anything like that that you might screw into. So that's something to keep in mind right there. And it continues on this way. And I've got it coming up along this, uh, under the seat right here, got another clamp. And then I don't know if you can see it. And the fuel pump is over here, so we're gonna take the, uh, the fuel line right here and cut it to length. All right, so just bring the hose around here. And I'll get it, and I don't wanna make that circle too tight right there because of the way this is. Cut it to length. Slip a clamp on there. And hopefully this side will fit on that tight fitting. Yeah, it's gonna go. If yours won't go, you could put a drop of oil on there and that would help it. Or Windex or something. Oh yeah. All right, fuel is hooked up. Now we gotta hook up the power real quick. Okay, for the ground, you can just screw it right to the frame. Again, checking underneath to make sure it's clear. Make sure that's tight. I don't think you have to scratch the uh, paint because the, uh, the screw that you're putting through there is cutting through the metal and that's making good contact. So obviously you're gonna need a switch to switch on and off the uh, electric pump and you're gonna need a place to put it. Now your lawnmower may be different, but uh, in this lawnmower, I'm gonna put it right here and I think that's gonna work just fine. And I've already looked underneath this uh, cover here to make sure there's nothing there that I'm gonna hit. So go ahead and drill that wherever yours might be. I'm putting mine right here. And I've got this heavy duty 20 amp uh, switch with a weather boot that goes o over the switch handle. Uh, I'm not going to leave mine out in the rain, but in case you do, uh, you might want to get something like that. Good, great. And just put the switch in there the way that you want it. All right, so what we have right here is the back side of the switch. We have only two screws there. Uh, one screw, you're gonna get a connection directly to the battery, and I'm gonna put an inline fuse between the battery and the switch in case anything shorts out against the frame. We don't wanna set the lawnmower on fire. So that's gonna go to one side. It really doesn't matter which one. And then the other side is gonna go directly to the fuel pump. I do like to solder these instead of crimp them. That's not going anywhere. Okay, so all I did here is I soldered two of those little eyelet connectors on the end of the wire and screwed them onto the switch right there. And I just wire tied everything to the original factory wiring like this. I ran the wires long so that they're long enough to go wherever they need. Um, don't need to tell the difference between the wires because like I said earlier, it doesn't matter which screw you go to. So now I can put this console back and the switch is hooked up. All right, here's my inline fuse holder right here. I'm probably only gonna put about a 10 or a 15 amp fuse in there. I don't know exactly how much current the uh, pump draws. It doesn't say in the instructions, of course. Um, but here, here we go with this. Uh, you can access the fuse pretty easily right here. This end is going directly to the battery, as you can see. 
and then the other end is going to go up to the switch with one of these wires that I ran up there just a minute ago. Okay, I'm going to try to film this where it comes out, but this is something I like to do with uh, the wires. Um, I like to twist them together like I'm going to show you here in a second. And then I also like to double heat shrink them. That gives extra protection for any rubbing or anything like that. So let me try and see how this goes on the camera here. Kind of put them like that, you know. And then I like to twist them together. Like so. Just kind of twist them together. Just like that, and then solder them. And if your joint winds up too fat for the um, inner heat shrink, you know, because you balled them together like that, uh, no worries. If you uh, made that mistake, just take a little bit of electrical tape and go over that first, and then go over it with the larger heat shrink. And here's my inner heat shrink. And just slip another one over top of it. That's just my own pet peeve. I've done that for years. Uh, it just gives me better peace of mind. All right, so the other one just goes over to the fuel pump directly. I'm going to hook that up and uh, tidy up these wires, and then we're ready to roll. Okay, got all the wires tidied up the way I want them. We're going to find out together if this thing works. If it's, is it full of leaks? Uh, any problems? Let me let it run for about five seconds, and then uh, if it passes that test, we'll take it out and start it. Okay, the fuel filter is filling up with fuel. That's probably good enough. I'm not seeing any leaks around the pump, so that's a good sign. Okay, got it all back together. Let's see how it goes. Runs like a champ. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to comment below. And thanks for watching.